Well, as you know, I'm here as a Deborah. And some of you might be wondering, if you haven't been here before, what the heck are the Debras? <laughs> well, the Debras is a group of women who, by invitation, prepare like Esther and rise up like Deborah through prayer for one another as prayer partners and as a group, worship, lifestyle of service, and the word, the study of the scriptures, and selected books relating to spiritual disciplines, leadership, and vision. I thought I would just clarify what the Debras are because we keep hearing about the Debras, but I don't think anyone really understood what the Debras is. So now you got it. <laughs> And as Dean Ferdinand, as I like to call him Dean, he is Elder Ferdinand, has said, this is our third week of the preaching series, Living Beyond Yourself, the Holy Spirit. Okay, and today I'm going to be sharing with you from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, which is entitled, and very appropriately, I think, for today, as what I've seen, I'm all over it. Because from what I've seen this morning, we have been all over it. And as we get into Ephesians 6.18, you're going to understand what we mean by I'm all over it and why I'm saying that we have been all over it this morning. So Javi, if you would. Ephesians 6, 18 Ephesians 6, 18 Says to pray at all times and on every occasion Pray at all times and on every occasion Pray at all times and on every occasion In the power of the Holy Spirit Okay, everybody, let's In the sing. power of the Holy Spirit Ephesians 6, 18 Ephesians 6.18 Says to pray at all times and on every occasion Pray at all times and on every occasion Pray at all times and on every occasion In the power of the Holy Spirit In the power of the Holy Spirit Ephesians 6.18 6.18 So church, what is it? Ephesians 6.18? Let me hear you. Ephesians 6.18 Alright. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning. So, I'm going to break it down. I am not a preacher. I am a teacher. I love the word. I love the word of God literally. I like to take the words that are in the scriptures and break them down. And that's what I'm going to be doing today, is breaking down that scripture that, so that we all understand and we're all on the same page so that we can all be all over it. Okay? Now, I have put up, there are two versions that I put, that I like from Ephesians 6.18 from the NIV. There's, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And then I also like the Holman Christian Standard Bible version. Pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer and request. And stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. So when I keep saying and when you keep hearing me say I'm all over it it's like I'm saying I've got this I'm taking care of this don't worry I've got your back okay and in Ephesians 6 18 the Apostle Paul was actually teaching and encouraging the Saints the church in Ephesus that when it comes to prayer I'm all over it we're all over it he was teaching them and exhorting them and showing them how to be all over it. Because you know what? Jesus was all over it. Okay? 
He was our prime example of being all over it. And we live in a day and a time and in an age where we as the people of God, called by God, have got to be all over it. So let's take a look at what's meant because I want to lay a foundation. I'm not going to assume that everybody here knows and understands, but what is it to pray? What, what is that? What is that word pray? Well, what is it? So I looked it up. It says communion with God. Now, what does the word communion mean? Well, I looked that up too. It means an act or instance of sharing. Intimate fellowship or rapport. A close relationship with someone or something. Are we getting the picture? In other words, it's talking, communicating with God. It's not just you talking, but it's the two of you talking together. You're talking to God and God's talking to you and it's back and forth, back and forth. And sometimes you're the one listening and sometimes he's the one that's listening. So it's sharing that and developing ultimately that close, intimate relationship with God through that. And I thought that a good example of prayer being communion is what we've come to know the Lord's Prayer, right? Most of us know the Lord's Prayer. That's found in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. And it says, Jesus had just finished praying when one of the disciples asked him to teach them to pray. So this is the way it goes. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. So he was already praying. Okay, he was already on it. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John the Baptist taught his disciples. Well, Jesus was all over when he began to teach them how to pray. So the Lord's Prayer, which I hope is, is up there, okay, is a perfect example of being all over it in prayer. Now, can we say that together since it's up there on the count of three? One, two, three. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever Amen. So you see, you just prayed a prayer that was all over it. If you didn't know that, now you know. Now you got a prayer that you can use as an example, as a model to pray. You don't have to pray it exactly like that, but it gives you an idea. Now let's take a look at Ephesians 6, 18. Pray at all times on every occasion. So when do we pray? When do we pray? All times, always, on every occasion. So to me, that means morning, noon, and night, 24-7, right? Seven days a week, right? Including Saturday and Sunday. Oh, yeah. And we have a great example of 24-7. In this house, we have a 24-7 prayer room headed up by the Mosaic House of Prayer. And I have our, our, our beloved Jeremy Lau here, and he's the one that leads that up. Our prayer room can be open 24 seven to pray. We just need for all of us to be on it, to be all over it by finding a time to be able to do that. That's all, so we have it right here. And you know, we live in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is historical. It's the place that the Moravians came to, okay? And the Moravians came from Hut, Germany. But they're known because they started a round-the-clock prayer watch that continued nonstop for over 100 years. So we have a great legacy, a great history, even here in this land called Bethlehem, of 24-7 prayer. And when we do that, we're all over it. Now, I said that Jesus was our perfect example. 
So let's take a look at that. Jesus certainly set the example for that. When he was baptized, it says in Luke 3.21 that as he was praying, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And then he spent the night in prayer before he chose the 12 apostles. That's in Luke 6, verses 12 to 13. And before he went to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed. And that's found in Matthew 26, 36 and Mark 14, 32. And in Luke 18, 1, Jesus taught and said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay? Now also, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was always exhorting, praying always. And we find that in Philippians 4, 6, Paul exhorts that in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be known unto God. To the Thessalonians, the Thessalonian church of that day, he told them, pray without ceasing. And to Timothy, young Timothy, a young man, Okay, he said to him, without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers day and night. And we had that great song, right, where we're offering up the incense of prayer 24-7, day and night, night and day. Perfect example. So Jesus was all over it, and Paul was all over it, and we, I, can be what? All right. Now let's continue. So praying at all times on every occasion. Now, I, I know I already read that, but I, I really want to get the point across. Every occasion. What does that mean? Well, I looked it up. An occasion is a favorable opportunity or a circumstance. It's an occurrence or a condition that brings something about, a happening, an incident. Now, there have been a lot of occurrences and incidences happening lately, haven't we? We have had devastation from the hurricanes in Texas, in Florida, in Puerto Rico, in the islands. There have been fires in Montana, and there's fires right now in the Napa Valley, okay? We have had earthquakes in Mexico and earthquakes in other parts of the world. And every time I look, I get a little alert on my phone, and I hear about something else. So there are a lot of happenings and occurrences. And you know what? The church has been on it. From the moment that the church, that the people found out about these hurricanes, I mean, we've been praying. We've been praying everywhere. I don't know about you, but I've been waking up in the middle of the night. I go to the bathroom and I'm praying. I'm turning around and I'm getting dressed and I'm praying. I'm thinking about all the people in all these places that are, are being affected and are affected. And I'm crying out to God and I'm saying, God, you're the only one who can intervene. So we're on it. We're all over it. Don't stop, church. Don't stop because it's not over. Puerto Rico is still suffering. Texas is still trying to recover. Florida, California is suffering. Come on now. We got to press in. And we got to be what? All right now. So now you know what it means to pray, okay, at all times on every occasion. But we also pray not only in those times of devastation and pain and suffering. We pray somebody's birthday an anniversary, a wedding, the birth of a child, a promotion, a job interview, okay? When somebody, let's say, is moving or they're getting a new house or whatever it is. So every occasion is an occasion to pray. Doesn't matter whether it be happy or sad, good or bad, rough or smooth. We need to pray. We need to be all over it. Now, it says further on in Ephesians 6.18 that we are to pray in the spirit. Now, this was a little touchy for me because I said, oh boy, this can become a little controversial here when we talk about in the spirit. So I'm going to do my best. I can't stay here real long because I don't have that much time, but I'm going to do my best. Praying in the spirit comes from having a relationship with God, which I mentioned at the very beginning. Okay? Praying in the Spirit is also praying God's Word. Okay? 
In John 15, 7, it says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. In 1 John 15, 14, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, which is actually his word because his word tells us what his will for our lives is, it says he hears us. Okay? So we got that covered. Now comes the little controversial part. Okay? Remember, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> Praying in the spirit is praying in tongues or another language and also praying with the mind or with understanding. So what does that mean? Well, in the Bible, praying in the spirit mostly refers to praying in tongues. And that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 14 through 19, which says, for if I pray in a tongue or another language or a the language of what I like to call of angels, okay, which is found in 1 Corinthians 13, 1. My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. So when we're all over it, we can pray in tongues in that heavenly language that some of us God has given Okay, but we also all need to be able to pray with understanding and understanding means that we need to be able to understand what you're saying when you're praying. Because if I stand here and I start praying, okay, in tongues, none of you is going to understand anything that I am praying unless God gives you the interpretation of it. Okay, so most of the time, and Paul exhorted the church, that we should pray with understanding. That means pray in the language that everybody can understand. So if most of us here understand English, I'm going to pray in English. I'm not going to pray in Chinese. I'm not going to pray in, in Russian because you're not going to understand. Okay, so I wanted to kind of get that clear in there. Okay, so... We're praying, we can pray in tongues, but we also, most importantly, need to pray with understanding, okay? So, when you pray in the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit guides you and leads you in prayer. It can be done through speaking in tongues, but it can also be done through speaking your own language or a language that others can understand. When we pray in the Spirit, then we can say that we're all over it. I'm all over it. So bear that in mind when you are praying with other people or in other churches or in groups. People need to understand what you're praying. All right. So pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And it says with all kinds of prayers and requests. With every prayer and request. So what kinds of prayers? What kinds of requests? All every kind in Philippians 4 6 it says do not be anxious about anything but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God so we have prayers that are of adoration we adore God we, ad we adored God this morning Amen. oh yes we did we, we adored him, boy. We focused on him. We lifted him up, boy. We proclaimed him. Oh, my God. And though we were singing, let me tell you something. Singing can also be a prayer. All right? And then there's the prayers of confession. And I, I think we all know what confession is, right? No, we can tell God about anything. I usually tell God I blew it, Lord. I done did it. I know I did it. Forgive me. Yes. Confession, like they say, is good for the soul. But it's also good because it keeps our relationship with the Lord tight. And then the devil doesn't have anything on us. He can't accuse us 
okay? He can't turn around and put stuff in us and say, oh, well, you, and then the next thing you know, instead of going to God, we're running away from God. All right? Then there's the prayers of thanksgiving. We're always thanking the Lord, right, for his goodness, for his love. He, he's a wonderful daddy, you know, for all his gifts, for all his provision, for all his strength. There's so much to thank God for, right? And then there's the prayers of supplication. Well, that's a prayer asking God for help, an S-O-S. -S. And that's what we've been doing when we've been praying for Florida and Texas and Puerto Rico. We've been supplicating, asking God for help, S-O-S, S-O-S. It's an emergency call. It's urgent. We need you. So keep on supplicating before the Lord. And then there's the prayers of intercession. And we do that all the time and we don't even realize it. A prayer of intercession is to God on behalf of another person. Do you guys pray for each other? Do you pray for your families? Do you pray for your friends? You pray for your kids? You pray for your pastors, your teachers, your neighbors. Do you pray for your enemies? I hope so. <laughs> they need a lot of intercession, right? <laughs> so we are told to make intercession for everyone in 1 Timothy 2.1, if you want to look that up later on. And Jesus served as our example in this area. The whole book of John chapter 17 okay chapter 17 of the book of John is a prayer of Jesus on behalf of his disciples and all believers Jesus knew how to intercede and the word tells us that he sits at the right hand of the father making intercession for us for you and me he is still interceding he has not stopped he has not ceased and if he is our example, then we need to be doing the same so that we can be all over it just like he is still all over it. Okay? And our requests and our petitions, we take our request to God. You know, when we have a need, when there's something that we need, you know, sometimes we need money. Sometimes we need a job. Sometimes we need to be able to move somewhere. You know, we have all kinds of needs and requests to put before God, and we can do that too. Now, there's also the prayers of agreement, which is also known as corporate prayer. We've been doing a whole lot of corporate prayer here this morning. We prayed for the city of Bethlehem. We prayed for the kids, right? That's corporate prayer. And the first Saturday of just about every month, we have corporate prayer here. In the evening, it's called We Cry Out Community Prayer. And that's corporate. Why? Because it is who? Us together as a group praying. That's corporate prayer. So whether it's a group of two or it's a group of five or 10 or 25 or thousands, it's corporate prayer. And we have that because we have the Mosaic House of Prayer that meets. They meet in groups. That's a group. We have our small group prayers like tea and testimony when we get together, right? There's prayer time there. There's the men's group, okay, with Brother Robert Sanderson and the men who come together every week. They have a time of prayer. That's all corporate prayer, ladies and gentlemen. So they are all over it. And then there's the prayers of consecration. Now, consecration means setting ourselves apart. That's when we decide, you know what? I need to kind of get along with you, Lord, for a while. You know, whether it's a couple of days, a few hours, a couple of weeks, whatever it is. And we just set ourselves apart before God, and we just let God, and we just tell God, Lord, I'm here. I want more of you. What is it that you want? What do you need? What, what, what's happening in this season of my life? Okay? So when we pray all kinds of prayers and requests, what are we? We are all over it. Now, I don't know how I'm doing on time. Somebody, somebody tell me. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, 
the last part of Ephesians 6, 18 says, with this in mind, be and or stay alert with all perseverance and always keep on praying and interceding for all the saints or the Lord's people. Hmm. So do we all know what alert means? I wanted to make sure I knew what it was. It means expectancy. It means awake. It means watchful. It means that we're ready to act at any moment, at any hour, in any situation, in any circumstance. We are ready to be all over it. We are ready to pray. That's what alert means. That we are quick to respond. We don't wait. We don't, we don't make prayer the last thing that we do. But it is the first thing that we do. It is not the last resort. It is the first and the most important resort that we could take. It is to pray. No matter what it might be. No matter where you might be. No matter what time it might be. Let it be the first. Then I looked at the word perseverance. Well, what does that mean? How, how, come, how come do I have to be alert and then I have to be perseverance? What is that? Well, simply it means not giving up. It means that even when you're tired, even when you think that you've prayed every prayer that you could think of, when it's been weeks and hours and days and months and years, you keep on praying and you don't stop praying. You keep pressing in with whatever you've got. And if all you've got is a cry, then cry. Because you know what? Our cries are prayers unto God and he understands cries he understands when we moan and we groan in prayer because we don't have words if that's all you've got left then go with it because God can take it and he can answer it and he understands it okay and then the last part is that we're to be praying for the saints or the Lord's people so who are the saints who are the Lord's people well I, I had a you know, I looked it up. There were a lot of things, but I found one definition that really, I felt really was suitable. Any believer who is in Christ and in whom Christ dwells, whether in heaven or on earth. Okay? Those are the saints, the Lord's people. And we are the saints. We are the Lord's people. Everyone in the body of Christ is the Lord's people. So, I'm and we are all over it when we pray at all times, in the spirit, with every prayer and request, and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. So can I hear you say it one more time? I'm all over it. Hallelujah.